couple weeks ago, the OpenAI team released ChatGPT connectors, and this got everybody excited because it's one of the first attempts of the OpenAI team to use MCP connectors to connect your ChatGPT to the external world. But I have a very strong belief that ChatGPT connectors will actually disappoint you, or at least in the short term, they will. And that's because they use the deep research tool in order to work. And that means that you're not going to get accurate results for simple tasks. So let me explain exactly what I mean in the upcoming minutes. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Matt Paiva. I build AI solutions for businesses, especially on the sales and marketing side of things. And I've made it my mission to help you guys become AI fluent. So let me explain exactly what I mean by this problem. Now let's start off with some basics. What are ChatGPT connectors? Connectors are essentially integrations to third party apps. This is what will allow your ChatGPT to connect to third party apps like Gmail, like Google Drive, like Dropbox, like HubSpot, and like GitHub. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that now your ChatGPT is a lot more aware of its context and the tools that it has access to, which means that if you want to ask a question about a document in your Google Drive, now you can, or at least that's what I thought, but I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Another thing that released together with these connectors are the ability of creating custom connectors. And essentially that means that aside from the third party applications that they already have built these connectors for, like the ones that I mentioned before, you are able to create your own connections using MCP servers and essentially allow ChatGPT to talk to external third party tools that are not yet connected by creating your own MCP servers and connecting them to your ChatGPT. If you're an avid ChatGPT user and you've built custom GPTs in the past, this is similar to building custom actions in custom GPTs, where you essentially allow that specific custom GPT to access the external world by attaching those custom actions that usually talk via API to other softwares. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I've built multiple of these custom actions and connected them to custom GPT. So if you're curious about that, you can just click on the playlist that's popping up right there and it will lead you to all the videos that I've made about this topic. I actually made a video allowing a custom GPT to send emails on my behalf when it prompted to. So that's really interesting because even with connectors, you can't actually send emails. So just go check it out if you're curious. How do you actually access that in your chat GPT um, interface? Well, you have your interface over here in your web browser you just need to click on your profile and in profile you're going to click on settings and in settings you're going to go over here to connectors and here you'll see the types of connectors that you have access to to connect to a new connector you just need to click on it and then click over here in connect and it will list all of your accounts that you have on google for example and you just have to choose one very similar process to connecting these accounts to make.com or relevance ai or other tools like that i promise it's really straightforward and once you have connected you can click on the ones that are over here on this list to see see when it was connected, works. how does it work with, and how you can manage this tool. Now, this is my main concern over here, works with deep research. Now, why is deep research a problem? Well, deep research is a tool built for complex tasks. And that means that it uses the O3 model in the background and that it's set up to pretty much run for multiple minutes until it comes up with a result that it will actually give you in the chat. Now, a lot of the use cases that people are thinking about when they see ChatGPT connectors are simple use cases like finding emails, like finding specific documents or something that are really straightforward to do. And you might be thinking, well, deep research tool uses the O3 model, which is the best model out there. So best model equals best outcome. Well, I wish I could tell you that's the case, but it's not really it. If you look at the screen over here, we will see a research paper done by some Chinese researchers called S1 Bench, a simple benchmark for evaluating system one thinking capability of large reasoning models. Now, what is this research paper about? Well, they're essentially trying to figure out how good are large reasoning models like the O3 model, like your deep seek models in performing simple tasks. And it turns out if we scroll down to the conclusion over here that they said that experiments review significant overthinking and performance degradation by large reasoning models and it highlights the gap between the current large reasoning models and dual system compatibility this means that whenever you prompt a reasoning model like o3 with a simple tasks you will very likely see it overthinking and not giving you the correct response not a great example of how that actually works is this chat when i tried to connect my gmail to the the connectors over here. And I just simply asked, can you tell me the last email I received from this email address? Now it went ahead and it looked for three minutes and it gave me the incorrect response. It told me that the last email that I received from this email over here was the email titled dinner with Coastal Motors. And if I go over to my email, the same one that I connected to ChatGPT and I search up the email that 
um, I was looking for, or at least the sender that I was looking for. I know for a fact that this was the last email that was sent to me because it was sent on June 9th, 2025. And the email that ChatGPT found was sent on April 25th, 2025. So I was like, maybe this is a one-off hallucination. Let me try this again. And I opened a new query and I queried the exact same thing. What was the last email I received from this email address? And then it asked me if I wanted a full message content, just a subject line or a summary of the email. I was like, can you find it and tell me what it was about? It thought for four minutes and it gave me the wrong response. It gave me a response of an email called what is your return policy, which is another email that I did for another video. Now, all of this to say that we are using a really powerful model, the O3 model or the deep research tool to run a very simple query. And that just doesn't add up. That doesn't pair together well. So the reason why ChatGPT connectors will disappoint you, at least in the short term, is that because you're thinking of ChatGPT connectors for simple use cases like this one that I just showed you. You need to be thinking about ChatGPT connectors for complex use cases. In fact, if we look over the release from OpenAI uh, about the ChatGPT connectors, we can see some examples that they provide right over here. One of the examples says, summarize everything we shipped in the last two sprints across PR descriptions, design docs, and, spe and spec files. The other example says, Compare our future adoption numbers with industry benchmarks mentioned in the analysis report. And the last one says, find the root cause of the outage referenced in yesterday's postmortem and list the follow-up actions. These are all prompts that would require some planning, some analysis, and some thorough thought process that O3 and the deep research tool would actually excel at. But a lot of the times when I see other people on YouTube talking about this feature, they're thinking about the simple use cases that people can use every day when they should be thinking about these complex ones that OpenAI just gave as an example. I wish I could tell you why OpenAI decided to go with this type of approach when it comes to creating the connectors. And I even had a hard time when I was writing the connector section in the ChatGPT Pro Toolkit, which is a free ebook that you can get completely for free down in the description below that outlines 12 different ChatGPT features that you're probably not using yet. So if you have haven't connected your ChatGPT to any of your softwares yet, just have that adjustment and expectation and try to figure out what would this be useful for. This type of feature is not one of the features that you're going to be using all the time, but it will be useful when you are trying to solve that one big problem that would take you six hours to solve. Maybe now it will actually take you three because the other three you'll be using ChatGPT to speed up the process. So if there's one takeaway I would like you to leave this video with is that ChatGPT connectors was built for complex problem solving, not for simple day-to-day -day tasks. So keep that in mind when you're using it. Otherwise, you're just going to end up disappointed like I did in my first use. If you want to level up your AI literacy or if you want me to build any AI systems for your business, just book a call with me down below. And if you want access to the 12 game changing features in ChatGPT you probably didn't even know existed, just go ahead and get that for free in the link in the description as well. Now, if you want to watch a video about those 12 features, you can just click on the one that's popping up over there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.